I almost said walking up and down a couple steps back here, I haven't fallen yet, and I'm pretty happy about that, but I realize I just jinxed myself. Good morning. Delighted to be with you all this morning. Uh, I think I know everybody. I'm David Graycheck. I'm the pastor of the church for my friend. Um, we only have a couple of announcements uh, that I want you to think about. Uh, coming up this Saturday is Shred Day. Um, Judy will be taking care of that with David Glasgow. If there's anyone else that could help and assist with that, that would be a good thing. I am going away. I will be up in, in Nebraska at my father's funeral, so I won't be able to be here. Um, but if you can help out, that would be great. If you've got things to shred, this is a good day to do it. Um, other than that, uh, I am working on the studies that we will be working on come uh, August that we'll deal with on Wednesday nights. I think it'll be a little bit fun, partly Bible study, partly how does my computer work, uh, partly uh, how does my camera work. I mean, I've been listening to some of what some of the folks said they would like to talk about, and I'd be happy to teach those. I think it'd be a little bit of fun. I'll try and get Chris to help me with the cameras. I think he'd be a great teacher with that. So um, with that, let's all rise and sing our opening hymn, Lift High the Cross.
Amen. Please be seated. The first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and he sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he scattered in the seed, some fell on the paths, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell on thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. And then verses 18 through 23. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed and fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word at once and receives it with joy. But since he has no no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble and persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it and making it unfruitful. But the one who received it, who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. This, friends, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me the gospel prayer as, yes, as found on our screen? Because I am in Christ... I have done nothing that could make you love me less and nothing I could do that would make you love me more. You are all I need for everlasting joy. As you have been to me, so I will be to others. As I pray, I'll do so according to the compassion you've shown at the cross and the power you demonstrated through the resurrection. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Seeing faces I haven't seen in a while, I want to run out and give you a big hug, but just, just assume that's what's going on, right? Yeah, or, or elbows, right? Um, we're not playing NBA basketball, right? We're, we're elbow bumping. That's a good thing. Let's try this. I didn't get any emails this week about prayers that we can be praying for for someone, but if you can think of a prayer, Chris, I'm getting feedback. If you can think of a, a, a prayer that, that we can be praying for someone, I'll do my best. If you let me know, I'll try to repeat it. Of course, if I hear you, there's a good chance that the people in between us hear also, but I want to be sure. Is there anything that we can be praying about, praying for? Yes, Wilma? I just learned that a colleague of mine who died quite suddenly this past week is 89, so I'd like to pray that she gets better. And colleague and a friend, Sonia, died this past week, and so praying for family and friends and certainly the joy in the resurrection. Wendy? This her son-in-law's husband, son-in-law's, son-in-law lost, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, son-in-law's mother lost her husband. I was trying to connect the son-in-law and husband, it wasn't working very well. Son-in-law's mother's husband died last night, and that's, that's very difficult. It's definitely praying for the, the family this morning. Definitely be praying. Yes. Canadian friend Mark spent 120 days in the hospital and was now, well, and then he's able to go home now. That's fantastic news. I'm grateful. Anybody that goes into a hospital today and comes home, I'm grateful, uh, let alone 120 days. That's great. And there's a stranger in the back, back here that I haven't seen forever. Of course, I'm going to pick on my friend Rhonda Owens. It's great to see you. I am leaving this afternoon on, uh, I'm going to go for a joy ride. Uh, it'll last about 5,000 miles. So I would ask for actually 4,990 as it's on my, my uh, map. If, I'd ask for you to pray for me. I'm, I'm going up to Nebraska first to, for my dad's memorial service on Saturday. Pray for my mom who still struggles with this. And then just some uh, time to spend with the Lord. I've always had a wonderful opportunity to pray and hear God's word or hear God's voice when I'm in the mountains. And so I plan to spend some time in Colorado and just be at peace. So hope my little Ford Escape handles it. Uh, it's not strong. Uh, with that, let me, let me pray for us. Loving God, we have friends that are in places they wish they weren't. We have friends that are coming home from hospitals after really long stays. Hopefully they made some friends while they were in there. But Lord, when death comes upon us and it's, it is uncertain, it is never welcome, Lord, let that not be the last word for anyone. Let that, one, let that one, let the family realize the resurrection. Let the families that are left behind find joy in the time that was spent with the loved one. Yes, Lord, we do know that the time that we have with that loved one is now ended the way we know it. But the love that you expressed through us, that we express with that person, Lord, will never, ever end. There are so many things, Lord, that we do not know, nor can we comprehend. We thank you that you protect us because, Lord, so often life hurts. There are storms we face like hurricanes on the outside, but, Lord, you know the storms we face within us. We don't always understand, yet you offer us the gift of faith. You've promised that by faith we can receive your mercy. Lord, we thank you for that mercy. And for the hunger for righteousness, for forgiveness, for you providing for all our needs, and for loving us more than we know how to love, but encouraging us to try anyway. Help us, O oh God, to love as Christ loved. Knowing our weaknesses, may we stand with all who stumble, Sharing in his suffering, may we too remember all who suffer. Held in his love, may we remember all whom the world denies. 
rejoicing in his forgiveness, may we forgive all who sinned against us. Lord, we thank you. And we do praise you. In you do we find strength and courage to go on. Lord, we thank you for the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, and that in you is hope everlasting. You have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity, but constantly to do your will. Bless our land and the honest industry, the sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us, God, from violence, discord, confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Make us who come from many nations with many different languages and many different ideologies a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we've entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land once again. When times are prosperous, let our hearts, Lord, be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let your trust fall away from us. Loving God, we pray all of this in the same way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen. Further prayers are asked to get through this. The man who lived long ago in New York, I'll get to the scripture reading in just a second, Chris. Lived long ago in New York, was able one day to satisfy a lifelong ambition by purchasing for himself a very fine barometer. It's never been an ambition of mine. So the story goes. When the instrument arrived in his home, he was extremely disappointed to find an indicating needle appeared to be stuck pointing to the sector marked hurricane. Hurricane in New York. I find it ironic that as my daughter was leaving to go back to Washington, D.C. this last Friday, I shared with her that there was a tropical storm forming off of Virginia and she didn't believe me. There you go, kids. After shaking the barometer very vigorously several times, its new owner sat down and wrote a scorching letter to the store from which he had purchased the instrument. The following morning, on the way to his office in New York, he mailed the letter. That evening, he returned to Long Island to find out not only the barometer missing, but his whole house was missing also. The barometer's needle had been right. There had been a hurricane. Many times... God shows us a path he wants us to take, and yet, just as this man ignored the barometer, we have a way of ignoring God's leading, ignoring God's word. Verse 105 that we're going to read here in a minute is one of the more familiar verses of the 176 verses found in this psalm. It's a lot. We use the verse along with verse 11 to form what we refer to as the pledge in the Bible. It relates to us on great advantages of the believer over the unbeliever. There are many, many advantages, but this, this is a big one. Believer has a greater understanding of life and its purpose. We know where we came from, where we're going, how to get there. God helps us by giving us a way. And then he lights it for us. To be lost is to be without direction. To be without light. Today's passage, it, we see the word of God as our lamp and it helps us to determine, as the psalmist did, to be faithful to the direction that God gives us. So I'm going to read for us from Psalm 119, just a few verses beginning in verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light from my path. 
I have taken an oath and confirmed it. Then I will follow your right, righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. My friends, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Let's pray together. Loving God, we ask that you please open our hearts, open our eyes, that we might clearly see, clearly feel, but Lord, help us also by opening our ears that we might clearly hear what you are teaching us in ways to not forget. Teaching us in ways when we are hurting that we can hold fast. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you ever forget? My wife claims I do a lot. It's either forgetting or not hearing. So we've got both of those things going on. But we find that we forget many things. It's interesting to me that we work hard to try not to forget anniversaries or birthdays. I'm pretty good at that. Maybe it's the numbers. Because it's meaningful for those dates we remember. But God help me if she doesn't send me a text now when I go to the grocery store on what is needed, I will forget half of what I've been sent for. Maybe if we put a number on it, I have a chance. But I don't. It can be devastating to any man we know to forget an anniversary. Any husband, anyway. It can also be devastating to forget a specific date. Do we forget God? I can find it easy to remember numbers for some stupid reason. I don't know how that happened. I'm good at it, though. But do we forget God? Scripture says that we're good at it. Past Acts. God speaking in Deuteronomy says, Take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen. Unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. I pray for us each and every week when we, 39 of the last 40, when, when, we, when we open up our eyes, Lord, please open our eyes that we might see what you would teach us. And I pray, Lord, please open our ears that we might hear your word speak into our soul. And we always want our hearts open that it might find a home to place itself. Because somehow or other, we have the ability to forget. We are called to teach our children and our grandchildren. Stacy and I have been spoiled the last five weeks. The difficulties with this coronavirus up in the D.C. area, our daughter brought down two little ones. Of, of my newest granddaughter, we got to spend, uh, if I can do the math right, seven of the first nine weeks of her life, or ten weeks of her life. It's It's amazing. I take the rule serious that we share God's love with those children, with those grandchildren. Yeah, we love to hang out with them, but we want to share what God is doing in our lives. We can't forget the beauty that God teaches us, even amongst the beauty of these little ones that are so gorgeous. I promise you, promise you photos are coming. I will make sure that they are shared. When we can actually get together, I've got, I don't have my phone with me, but loads of photos to share. God gives us a covenant that God asks us to remember through a covenant. We've got several covenants. We've got the Abrahamic covenant that God made with Abraham. We've got the covenant with our Lord and Savior, the, uh, with the, the Lord's Supper, uh, the mess Messianic covenant. Covenant is, is, is a word that may be abused a little bit, but it, it's, it needs to be understood. It's an agreement to act and it's only one way. God says, 
I am going to love you. I am going to forget you. My son, Jesus Christ, is going to forget your deeds. My, my son is going to uh, accept all of the penalties of your past on himself. You're, you're, you're forgiven today, yesterday, and in the future. That's a covenant. That's God doing all the work for you, and you don't have to do anything except be grateful and live a life that says, I understand what God is talking about now. It's a one-way deal. It, it's, I, I am going to take care of you and, and you, all you have to do is accept it. Covenants are a beautiful thing. We have, we have ways of forgetting God's covenants to us. And we set up ways for ourselves where we are acting. Maybe there's something about us acting that we feel like when we are more a part of the process, we're more responsible for our lives. We've got several ways in our world. We've got the Democratic way. We've got the Republican way. And I promise you those ways are going to be a part of your life more and more until November. Yuck. We've got the 30-day diet way. We've got the Cubs way, which begins July 24th. And I can promise you will become more and more a part of my life because I miss it really bad. We've got the serve, save the earth day way. We've got the live hard, the, good, the world's going to end way. There's a way that calls for everyone to have rights. There's a way that also calls for nobody to have rights. There are all kinds of ways. I could have fun with this. I only had a few as I was sitting and writing. But Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. He then made a hard statement. And, and this is always the question, not that Jesus is the way to God, but for someone that has a hard time accepting that, accepting that I have to have something to do with this, they have a hard time accepting when Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now guess where the debate lies? Is Jesus the only way? Well, why are you worried about that? I would suggest, I don't know. God is big. God is all-powerful. God can do anything he wants. So I don't know. But what I do know is the first part. The first part when Jesus said, I am the way. I am the path. I bring you to the Lord. Wherever you're at, I am the way. Why don't we focus on that instead of trying to imagine a different way? Seems simple, right? How do people forget God? We eat and are full. We should feel blessed and be full. For the good he has given us. I remember growing up, I don't know if it was Sesame Street or if it was uh, PBS or what, but I learned as a child, you are what you eat. Right? Carrot cake. Right? You are what you eat. But the same has to be true what you ingest and what the Lord is teaching you. I love you so much. That should be a part of who we are. Love. I forgive you. Anything that you've done in your past, stop trying to bring it up in the middle of the night when no one's around and you can't sleep. I've already forgiven that, God says. That should be a part of who we are. It should be a part of what comes from us. Forget the God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes which he commands us today. We have such an easy time doing that. We want an easy life. Who doesn't? We want all this coming to us, but often we think that everything we have comes from our own doing and we forget the blessings and where they come from. I mean, we could talk, this text talks a little bit about idols. We could talk about idols all day. I don't want to. I, 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 I really don't. Idols have a way of garnering our attention and taking our focus somewhere else. There's a story about Gideon. The first time, uh, when I'm going up to Nebraska for my dad's funeral, on the way home, I'm coming back through Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. If you know anything from your geography, that's not on the way home, right? And I'm not, uh, I'm sort of wandering, but I won't be lost. 
There's a time for me where I, I mentioned before that I, I have a, a, a wonderful presence of the Lord in such majesty of his mountains. I spent a time one time in, in Poudre Canyon, which is outside of Fort Collins. I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Couldn't remember the Fort Collins part. It's just a simple canyon, and I had a time in my life where I really needed to make a decision. It was at the beginning of my training in seminary, and I had to decide. I was being asked to move to Colorado to manage a sales force, and that meant leaving, going into seminary. I had recently been playing baseball with my boys and tore a rotator cuff. Oh, that was fun. And, and I, I sat next to this, this river in Poudre Canyon, and, and I asked God, I said, God, what am I supposed to do? And in a Gideon moment, I, I, I said, God, if, if you want me to stay in school, I, I ask that you please take this pain away from my shoulder. Nothing else is working. And it hasn't hurt since. Gideon was one where God asked him to lead an army of Israelites. And, and, and he, he said, I, you know, I don't know, God. I don't know if I'm the guy. I don't know if I'm your guy. Um, if that's so, we'll make all of the dew fall on the ground, but leave the fleece dry. If you know the story, and God did it. Everything, the, the dew was all over the place, but not on the fleece. And did that convince Gideon? No. He said, no, no God, you know, I, I don't know if you heard me right. I don't know that I'm your guy. And so what happened is, he said, just have the dew fall on the fleece, but not the rest of the ground. And it happened. Gideon said, all right, Lord, I'm your guy. And that day, sitting next to Puder, in Puder Canyon, next to that river, I said, Lord, all right, I'm your guy. We'll do this. Gideon thought that he would have the armies of the Israelites to go and take care of this, this situation. The Midianites, gosh, they were big. They were lots. Gideon had his numbers reduced to 300 men to take on these hundreds of thousands. God wanted him to know it was about God and not him. It wasn't about him confirming the question. God had some work that he wanted to do for him. And God teaches us, I've got some work that I want to do for you. You can ask. God doesn't have any problem with us questioning what's going on. But once we ask the question, we need to live into it. God, what are you doing in our midst? And God will speak into us and teach us and help us to see, just like he did with Gideon. God teaches us in Judges 8, 33. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the Baals and made Baal Bereth their God. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hand of all the enemies of every side. We're smart people. You all are, are very sharp people. I've had conversations with everybody in the room. But it's easy, even these folks that had seen what happened in, in Gideon's midst, they saw him get pared down from hundreds of thousands to 300 and defeat the Midianites. As soon as he died, they forgot all of it. Forgot all of it. Forgot the whole thing. It's like you leaving this place on Sunday morning and then forgetting that God even exists. When you go into traffic and someone cuts you off, come on, shake your head with me. I'm not the only one. Gideon was taught an amazing lesson of obedience. As soon as he died, that lesson went out the window. People gave themselves away to false gods. And, and, and gave us a topic that's really kind of hard to talk about in church. Scripture speaks of these people giving themselves over to whoredom. Giving themselves over to whatever it was that was whispering in their ear, making them feel better at the moment. When, when the Lord first spoke through the prophet of Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a wife of harlotry and have children of harlotry, for the land commits great harlotry, by forsaking the Lord. What this speaks of is people selling out for something other than God. That's all it means. 
people give their lives, their spirits, to something that takes the place of God. And the description Scripture has for that is whoredom. Hosea 4 says, they shall eat, 4.10, they shall eat and but not be satisfied. They shall play the harlot but not multiply because they have forsaken the Lord to cherish whoredom, wine, new wine, which take away the understanding. My people inquire of a piece of wood and their walking staff gives them oracles. For a spirit of whoredom has led them astray and has left their God to play the whore. And then in, in uh, 5, 4, their deeds don't permit them to return to their God. For their spirit of whoredom is within them, and they know not the Lord. I don't know about you. I don't want to be known as someone who walks in that kind of spirit. And I, I have to admit, I just lied. I know you all well enough that you don't want to walk in that spirit either. I know the folks in our church well enough that I don't know of anybody that wants to walk in that kind of spirit. So the task before us is, what can we do to help ourselves remember? Remember the teachings that we have been given. Scripture teaches there is no faithfulness or steadfast love. How about we focus on steadfast love then? All hesed is, is what it is in the Hebrew. Focus on hesed. Nothing removes me from the love that God gives us. How about Scripture teaches us that no knowledge of God in the land. How about we be that living example of what it is like to be God in the land. Scripture teaches us that there is lying, murder, stealing, committing adultery. I don't think I have to convince you that this is a bad idea. Scripture teaches us that they break all boundaries and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore, the land mourns and those who dwell in it anguish. I don't have to suggest to you that this could be happening in our world today. We know it is. And, and my heart breaks for it. I know your heart does too. It isn't us versus them. Our people are made in the image of a loving God or outside of these walls hurting. That should break every one of our hearts. Scripture teaches that this decay leads to the destruction of a nation. And we shouldn't want to stand for that. God has a provision to help us with this. In Psalm 78, God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers to teach the children, help the younger ones to know this law. That the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn and arise to tell them and to teach their children so that they should see the hope in God and not forget the works of God. Friends, if we have a younger generation that doesn't know God, that's on us. That's on our generation. We've got to do what we can to live that outside of these walls so that they don't have to walk around saying, what in the world do I do with this mess? Thanks, Mom and Dad, for leaving me this. Thanks, Gaga. That's Grandma. Thanks, Gapa. That's me. Thanks for leaving me this mess and not teaching me what God has taught. No kid is going to say that because they don't know what they don't know. God's Word guides us and helps us to take the love that we've been given and express that in our actions our feet are set in the darkness of this world. The word is a lamp for them. The picture is one of a lantern on a pole that is held out just far enough to see the next step. Just far enough that we might know how to make sure we don't stumble. It doesn't teach us what's on the other side of the room. We don't have to worry about that. We do. This lamp will show us just what's in front, just what we need. It provided enough light for the path. Only the light of the word can illumine the path and keep us from stumbling. We find the way we are going through the word of God. God speaks. God's word will not tell us which street we are to take. God's word isn't going to tell us which highway I'm supposed to drive down in the coming weeks. 
but his spirit will lead. God's spirit will lead, I am certain. God's word will not tell us everything that we shouldn't do. But as we understand and learn the principles of God's word, it shines to light, a light to direct us in all that we are, remembering all that we have been taught. I want to note from verse 106, we need to make a commitment to God's word. It isn't the only way that God speaks to us. But even with the Spirit teaching us new things today, I have a hard time believing that the Spirit would contradict what God was teaching us before in His Word. Proverbs 3 teaches us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Friends, I have to lean on that. With me stumbling, I can't handle a crooked path. I can't. God's word guides us with that beautiful lamp for our feet, remembering who the light is for and who gives off the light is all we need to remember. It's the key for us walking upright. It's the key for a younger generation, seeing what it is and how it is that we can deal with this hurting world. God's challenge is for those who forget him. God's call is to those who forget him. God's grace is even given when his people forget him. And finally, with Isaiah 49, can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even then may forget, yet I will not forget you. Scripture is teaching us it's even possible that a pregnant woman might forget the child that's in her tummy. I can't imagine that. But God is suggesting even if you could imagine something as odd as that, it's not even possible for God to forget you. It says, Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. My friends, Lest we forget, God's promises to never leave us, never forsake us, even during a pandemic, even during riots, even during racial injustice, even during all kinds of manner of things that we could come up with next. As my friends are telling me, this is July, so this is the seventh level of Jumanji for 2020. Who knows what comes in August? I hope nothing. But even in the midst of it, God says, I love you. I'm with you. I'm your strength. Let that be known to a world that's hurting. Let's pray together. Loving God, we do thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your love. Lord, it's easy for us to forget. Please know we don't mean to. But we do, and we can. We thank you so much for your gift. We thank you so much for your mercy, for your grace. Lord, be with us all as we leave here this day. Be with all of those who are at home hearing this message that we may walk away from understanding your word different, strengthened, united in understanding you are in charge and we are not. Be with us in the coming weeks, Lord. Keep us strong, keep us safe. Keep us on fire, Lord, with your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the, the choir comes up, as I was thinking about the song for our closing hymn today, I thought exactly what I had just gotten done praying. I thought, Lord, send us. Send us in just such a way that we could have a stronger ownership. Have you ever met someone who is so confident that what they say can't be flapped? My friends, as we share God's word on a regular basis, I want you to walk away with that feeling. 
My hope is that anyone that comes in contact with us walks away feeling, ah, amen. So as we sing our hymn, would you please rise and join with me, singing of God of grace and God of glory, the one whom we serve, the one who loves us and sends us out into a world that needs to understand. Let's, let's sing together. Loving God, grant us wisdom, grant us courage that we might live what we know to be true. My friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the light of the Lord's countenance shine upon your face and give you peace. Go now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's children said, amen. amen. Please exit to your left.